Hello and welcome to What is Congestive Heart Failure? My name is David Woodruff and I would like to introduce you to the concept of congestive heart failure, what it is, and then we'll later talk a little bit about the pathophysiology and the treatment. So let's get a general idea of what is congestive heart failure. We hear so much about it. So many of our patients out there have congestive heart failure. So let's find out what it really is and what we can do about it. One of the characteristics of heart failure is that it is a clinical syndrome, meaning it is a clustering of symptoms that make up the syndrome rather than being a specific disease process. So there's multiple etiologies that could be involved with heart failure. Not all of our patients with heart failure, though, have volume overload, and we'll talk a little bit about that. There's two different types of heart failure, and those are systolic dysfunction and diastolic dysfunction. Systolic dysfunction is dysfunction with contraction, whereas diastolic dysfunction is dysfunction with relaxation. So if you think about the heart just being one big muscle here, the muscle could either have trouble contracting or have trouble relaxing. One of the end results of having heart failure is myocardial remodeling. That is the process of the heart remodeling or changing its cell type into a different cell type that doesn't function as well as the original one. Part of the process that causes this to happen are compensatory mechanisms that are involved with having a low cardiac output state. Heart failure can be a progressive disease, meaning that it gets worse over time as a result of compensatory mechanisms, such as our sympathetic nervous system, our renin-angiotensin system, and aldosterone kicking in, designed to help the patient overcome the decreased cardiac output, they actually make the heart failure worse over time. Now you can see there's a number of etiologies associated with heart failure, including myocardial infarction and ischemia being number one, followed by a number of other etiologies that either can be the primary or can additionally contribute to heart failure as a problem. As was previously mentioned, ischemia or myocardial infarction is the most common reason why somebody would develop heart failure. As a result of having the heart fail and having decreased cardiac output, normal physiologic mechanisms kick in that try to maintain our cardiac output. When those normal mechanisms fail, then we start to get systemic mechanisms that are working in the body, like the system the sympathetic nervous system, the renin-angiotensin system, and aldosterone. All of those things kicking in trying to improve that patient's cardiac output. There's also a capillary fluid shift that occurs, moving more fluid into the vasculature and out of the tissues. So all of these things, although designed to be helpful and inc increase our cardiac output, are actually going to be harmful. And they're actually going to put more stress on the heart, more strain on the heart, and make that heart failure worse. Due to the initial insult on the heart, and the negative action of our compensatory mechanisms, we may see signs of decreased perfusion, including tachycardia, tachypnea, dyspnea, blood pressure changes. Initially, the blood pressure may rise, then followed by a decrease in blood pressure, and even edema formation. Treatment revolves around two major concepts, increasing the delivery of oxygen to the heart and decreasing the workload on the heart. So it makes sense that if the heart is already overstressed, we want to increase the supply of oxygen to it and decrease the amount of work it's doing so it's not using as much oxygen. There are three main components involved in the increase of oxygen to our heart in the patient with heart failure. One is to supplement that oxygen, give the patient additional oxygen. There has been some debate about whether or not this is a worthwhile strategy in patients with heart failure. Nitrates, so giving nitroglycerin and medications like that, and will help to open up the coronary vasculature, so does morphine. So they're opening up the coronary vasculature so more oxygen can get to the heart muscle. Beta blockers slow down the heart so they're also going to be helpful in decreasing the amount of workload of the heart and increasing the amount of oxygen supply. Remember, the longer the diastolic time we have, the greater the amount of oxygen that gets to the heart. 
You may notice beta blockers are going to be mentioned here again along with decreasing demand. So by slowing the heart, we not only increase the supply of oxygen getting to the heart, but we also decrease the demand for oxygen by the heart. So beta blockers are working on both ends of the equation, which are going to have a beneficial effect for our patient. Anxiety control, because we don't want the sympathetic nervous system to be activated by the patient's anxiety. And we also want to decrease the amount of stretch on the myocardial fiber. The more we stretch it, the harder it contracts. The harder it contracts, the more oxygen it uses. The big name in the game here is prevention. Manage our glucose, manage our blood pressure. Diet. Okay, so probably eating the sandwich in the lower right corner is probably not going to be very helpful for somebody who's trying to prevent heart disease. So we do want to manage our diet, watch our diet, so that we are eating a nice balanced diet and not overdoing it in any one area. Exercise, very, very important that we have exercise who are maintaining a good healthy heart and a good healthy vasculature. That will help to prevent heart failure. Now these things don't necessarily keep heart failure at bay totally, but they may help to prevent it, may help to improve the symptoms if the patient already does have heart failure. Thank you for joining me for what is congestive heart failure. I hope that this short video has helped to increase your awareness of what heart failure is. Please join me in the remaining videos in this series so that hopefully you can learn a little bit more about the pathophysiology of heart failure and the current treatment strategies that are in use. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, bye now.